Hello, everyone. Hey. Welcome back to the Talkaholics podcast. My name is Iman. And I'm Rabia. Uh, this is our 25th episode. I know. I feel like we say it every intro, really. We just yeah. don't remember the number. Yeah. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Like, I'm not even 25 years old. <laughs> We're not even there yet. <laughs> but 25 episode, which is really exciting. Thank yeah. you for everybody who's been, you know, keeping up, keeping up um, with our podcast and listening in. Um, we love doing what we do, so... We're glad that people are listening. Thanks for the support. It's great. Um, but yeah, this this episode is fun. We talk a lot about um, film. For sure, we obviously, like always, have to talk about oh. detailed some sort of respect. Yes. We talk about the new Us trailer, which you probably have seen uh, Super on creepy. YouTube or somewhere. Because, Super man, creepy. It was trending, like, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, From management. And we, also <laughs> <laughs> and we also, I finally give my review. Of Spider Man, even though I know, I know Iman gave her little two cents about it, but I finally watched it. Amazing, as expected. We talked about the Golden Globes and uh, finally about all the Kevin Hart stuff, which again, we probably couldn't have escaped within the last few weeks. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy. the North York Center, mm-hmm. which is like this uh, mall that's uh, right across the movie theater, and it's like a ni- nice space that I take the just one subway stop over to to do to walk during lunch because mm-hmm. like I sit all day and I hate that my thighs are becoming gross and chunky <laughs> now, and I'm like I need to you know I get my walk in at, at that place. Yeah, that place that's nice. I like that building. Have you been? Oh, oh you yeah, yeah. That, that library there is it's gorgeous. so nice. It's really nice. It's such a great library. And they have like a whole fabrication studio and everything in there. I don't oh. Know they, I haven't been there in a while, so maybe it's a new. a whole room dedicated to sewing. So, like, that's you cool. You can drop in. You don't have to reserve anything. I think it's, like, first come, first serve. You can sit it's down. just out there and open? You sit down next to a machine. You just have to bring your own thread and your own fabric, and you can use it. So, I was like, that's oh. great. And there's always one lady in there who's, like, kind of mans everything. So, okay. I guess you could, like, help. You yeah. Too. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's a really, really nice space. So, I, I do my walks there. Um, and then recently, though, I was leaving the station or the mall to go back to Finch Station, and I was entering the station to go. And you know how sometimes uh, subway stations here in Toronto, they have, like, multiple doors that you can enter through? Mm-hmm. And usually there's one door that's, like, stopped open with, like, some sort of a, like, a door stop that's just left open. And like the station? Yeah, yeah. The station will have, like, multiple doors. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Open like this, but there's always one that's just open. Yeah, okay. let people through easily. Yeah. So, and there was a homeless man that was just standing there with, like, a Tim Hortons cup and whatever, collecting money. And there's a bunch of women, like, walking back and forth past him, not saying anything. And he was just whatever, right? And the second I passed by him, I didn't say anything, just like the other people who passed him. And he's like, he looked at me, he's like, if you don't say thank you, I'll fucking close this door on your face. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> like, he cussed and everything. Like, that's verbatim, what he said. And I was like... So confused walking by him because I was like, what do you mean say thank you? Like, I didn't react at all. I didn't look at him. Yeah. Even, and just kept going because I was like, I don't want to get, yeah. like, pummeled today. <laughs> so I just kept walking. The whole time I was like, oh, I think he was probably holding the door open. Oh. I didn't realize. I thought he was just standing there. But then the whole time I was thinking, why me? Yeah. I guess maybe there's a bunch of people that didn't say thank you. And then you were, like, the last straw. He was like, that's it. Oh, yeah. man. Basically. And I was like what the heck like th- this is not the first time that within north york i've been stopped by strangers I, did I yes you, you said you said it in the, the, in the podcast yeah so like, I don't, do i come across as like gullible and like yeah the one kid we just look out? so innocent they're like that's the one <laughs> that's the day i can ruin right there <laughs> i was so like uh, like i didn't anyways like it was just the way he chose me but i guess you're right i think he was like not having yeah. it saw me and was like okay she's alone let's just <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, it's so scary yeah. when people like say things to you. To you when they yeah, when like like <laughs> when you're alone. I I remember this one time vividly. Like I was at the Inn Center. For people who don't know the Inn Center, that's it's one of it's a really famous mall in yeah. Toronto. It's yeah. like the tourist attraction 
It's like the touristy mall yeah. that you go to. It's, when you're when you're coming to Toronto, downtown yeah. Toronto, that's the mall you go to. Besides Yorkdale, yeah. the most like no well known mall. So it's right in the heart of downtown. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I was at Eaton Center with Lamise. Yeah. And um, we were upstairs, you know where the Zara is? Mm. So we were going, I was walking towards the Zara and I was telling Lamise, this is like maybe a year or two ago, and I was telling her about the this YouTuber I follow, Jackie Aina, um, okay. who's like this makeup YouTuber, even though I don't even wear makeup, but like, <laughs> I, she's so funny, I just love watching her. So, <laughs> um, she, so I was telling her about her, I was like, yeah, she's so funny, like, I love watching her videos and she's so informative, even though I don't really wear a lot of makeup, yeah, like, yeah. it's just nice to have this information <laughs> and everything. And then... I kid you not, me and Lamise are walking, and there's a lady in front of us. Mm. So she's not behind us, listening okay. into the conversation. She's in front of us. Mm. She turns around, and she goes, yeah? And I was like, what? Oh, my God, why? She... <laughs> so cool. she, she was like, yeah, she's really funny? Yeah? Like, literally, I was like, I was so confused. Like, Wait, she was saying it sarcastically? Like, tell she me was saying it, Yeah, she was oh saying my... it to us. Oh, my God. And at first, I was confused. I was like, does she know Jackie Anna? Like, is she wanting to join the conversation? But then I realized it was a really aggressive, like, yeah, yeah, up in our face, like, yeah. 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 And then after that, me and Louise, like, start veering away to go into the Zara. And this lady is still talking. I think she was a little mentally unstable. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay. But <laughs> she was just like, yeah, it's funny, yeah? And I was like, ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, don't follow me, please. Yeah, that's so and I ran into the Zara. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then that was it. I was so confused. I was like, did I say something that offended you? Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe she was just annoyed by my voice. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. That's so strange. Like, that, sorry, you just reminded me of one other thing. Is, again, in North York, where, where <laughs> I work, I track people, I guess, in this area. <laughs> but, like, I was, okay, I was with a co-worker this time. Um, and we were walking just to the RBC, or no, the TD Bank, um, and we were walking to this other set of um, escalators to go up to go to the bank, and there's this guy who uh, was wearing his jacket, this tall white guy, much older than us, um, and he was carrying a lunchbox, so we knew he worked there, I've never seen him before, and he was standing in front of us on the escalator and kept looking back at me, okay, like, not w- one time saw me, and then second time <laughs> held it there, and then, like, the whole time me and my coworker, we stop our conversation, we're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, my, my coworker, this specific one, she's great. Like, she's probably not listening. But she's, like, <laughs> she's, like, such a sweetheart, and she's very protective. Like, and when any type of this kind of thing happens, she's, like, the type to approach the person oh, and talk about it. She's not I would just let it go. I'd be like, just not, leave That's me. I'm like, yeah. just, let's kind of move. Yeah. But she's the more, more type to confront, and she's, like, super comfortable with that. So I knew this was going to happen. So I was like... Oh my god, this is the worst. <laughs> the worst scenario ever. Whatever, but she lets it go while we were on the escalator. So, so you have to go past that, uh, like another set of elevators to go to the TD bank. And so we're passing the elevators. He stops here to go up because he works here. We're going past. So he stops to the elevators. We're going past him to go to the bank. And again, like as we're approaching him, does the elevator look to me the next time? Like as in he looks up, like at me up and down. And I'm not oh. wearing anything different that thing really yeah but even if you were like yeah it doesn't yeah exactly it doesn't um make it any better but so (laughs) as we're passing him that time really took my coworker off oh no and she did like the literal like what are you looking at is there something you need like that kind of like open like (laughs) yeah she was just like big bear defense yeah what you talk to my friend like that what are you doing and i was like the whole time oh my god oh my god i'm not with her i'm not with her (laughs) and he like he didn't say anything he just looked at her again, and it was like this straight, like so. Yeah. That so I you just never found out why he was staring at you? No, but he was like, you know, like when you get I don't like, that. like that. Most yeah. people just go sorry or like they yeah. He re- retained Kept... eye contact with her. That's but, so creepy. I know. So oh I my like, god. I was like, even when he did that, he didn't do anything. <laughs> He's like, he doesn't care. I will stare at whoever I <laughs> she want. She was so mad. She went to the team. Back. She was like, frustrated at the team. <laughs> I don't know what he did. Though. Why is he doing that to you? <laughs> Whatever. We don't know him. Uh, oh, yeah. Moral of the story is there's lots of interesting people in Toronto. <laughs> That's basically what it was. Yeah, guys. You ever decide to visit? No, we're just scaring people from visiting. No, Toronto. no. Toronto's, Toronto's great. great. Most people are friendly. Do you, random thing, but I don't know if it was just me, but me growing up, like, I didn't, I didn't rep Toronto. Like, when I when I was growing mm-hmm. up, like, I didn't think Toronto was the greatest place, you know? Like, yeah. I felt like, oh, we're Canada. Like, the States is, is where it's at. Is that Canada? And, like, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're, I'm like, we're Canada. Like, we're, we're, like, you know, Walmart version of America. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's so funny. Like, that's what I thought I'm all my life that. growing up. But, honestly, we're great. We're great. Like, obviously, we have our issues. Canada, yeah. 
Yeah, mm, it has insane. issues. Loves to promote diversity, but we're only diverse in like one city. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, select few. Yeah, select few. But um, Toronto's great. I honestly believe so. I mean, if the one thing it could change, if we could like manufacture Toronto, it would be the weather. <laughs> yeah, they're, if they're, we could oh like, my God. like somehow or do something had, like, with one, science if we had, like, and one, change our weather. If we had like one part of Canada that was like... Beachy. Yeah, and we all moved there. Oh my That'd god, that'd be great. We don't have but that. it looked like Toronto. Yeah, exactly. Because I I can't move away from the city life. Like, yeah, I'm I, born I and raised in the city. Yeah. How can I go. not be a city person? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Even like when I used to live in Markham, it was a struggle. Yeah, str- Markham's not even that bad. Because it's sub- suburban. It's for suburban. You? Yeah. Like I live in like consider. I it's still considered suburban, like where I live in yeah. in Scarborough, yeah. but much more active in terms of like public transportation yeah, yeah. and like. There's easy access to get places. Even to get downtown doesn't take me that long. Mm, But, like, in Markham, you have to be driven. You need to be driven. Or, like, do that long 20-minute walk. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, the next bus stop is where (laughs) it takes so long. So, but Markham's getting there. They're they're having their, you know, they're improving. You know what? uh, Yeah, we still, you know what it is? It's, it's, no, what I was saying is that I've talked about this with a coworker too, in the past of, like, how, like, five years ago, if you Mm -hmm. told people you were, you know, driving in from a place like, Ajax or Barry, it's like shocking. Yeah, like, and now mean? it's like Bowmanville. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's getting farther and farther. Yeah. I feel like Markham was at again like mm. a few years ago of like, what do you mean you're? Oh yeah. You know, you go to school all the way from Markham. Like they yeah. used to say Because if you, you even think about York, like right? Markham ten years ago was like very was different that. than it is now. There was like yeah. nothing. There's yeah, some that area where that North Falls and everything is now, it's, like, it used to be, like, flat, flat land. land. And then, like, the stupid telephone poles and everything. Yeah. Like, and I was actually talking about that with my mom today, like, when we were going to the Markham, the fairground. Yeah. So, like, on that, where Major Mac yeah, yeah, is, yeah. like, and 16th, there's, like, still a whole bunch of farmland. Mm-hmm. And it's now being sold to make, like, condos and houses okay. and stuff like well, that. Yeah. But, like, there's still so much, so like... Much space yeah and it's crazy because i'm like this is still considered markham but like if you drive 10 minutes away you're like in a different world (laughs) so it's interesting yeah Yeah. no um but yeah thanks guys for uh listening in on the which episode is this 25th it's a 25th episode 25th episode of the talkaholics podcast 25th episode of talkaholics podcast Okay, I thought I was going to go into something, but I don't have the musical <laughs> talent to do that, okay. so. Um, this is cool. Oh my god, wait, this is like quarter. This is like the quarter. Yeah. This is like. To 100? I didn't think about that. Yeah. And halfway to 50, man. Like, I feel like because it's a weekly thing, obviously you would be like kind of hitting these non mark yeah. faster, but it doesn't feel that way. Because yeah. I, I think by 25th, I would have thought this would have been so, so, so much work to get to this place. Yeah. But I think because we're having fun. Along yeah, the way. we have fun, and it's. Pretty simple to do. Yeah, and we're into Enjoy like the it. rhythm of things. The routine is like okay, we know definitely what, what to do by now. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for listening in, guys, for all twenty five episodes. If you're someone who has done that, congrats to you. Yeah, you all twenty five. Oh my god, you're a writer. That's like at least twenty five hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Time. Wow. Oh that's, shit, that's, that's a lot of time. I don't know. I've done that for other podcasts, but for ours, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to talk about first, and I'm not gonna go in order based on what's here, but I don't know if we talked about Jordan Peele's. Australia. We didn't. Oh my god, this yeah. is what I wanted to talk to you about, and then we couldn't because we were recording something else. Yes. Have you seen it? Yeah, I have seen Razia. it. Razia. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited, and like. And it's just called us, right? It's just us. It's okay. just us. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen the trailer, you need to watch it. Yeah. But basically, this family goes on vacation. No, goes on vacation. Yeah, it's a black family. With, yeah. I think it's like just the four of them. So mom, dad, and, and then two a kids. Girl. Yeah. yeah. And they go on vacation, and or did they buy a house or they're just going on vacation? I can't I think remember. They go on vacation with another couple who's white. That's a, that's what made me think it was a vacation because they went with another family. No, they went with another family. Yeah, because remember there's that scene of like there's they're all on beach chairs, and then the lady from Handmaid's Tale is there. Did you not see that? Did you watch a, sh- a shorter trailer? Did I don't know. Did? Okay, what they All doing? I remember <laughs> is that they're on this beach, whatever. Yeah. And then like at night in their house. They, like, start hearing things, Mm -hmm. and then they find out that there's a a family that looks exactly like them, but they're, like, creepy. They're, like, deformed. Yeah, yeah. and, like, basically it's, like, I don't know, I don't know what the symbolism behind it, I need to dive deep, I need to see the movie, I need to go through the, you know, analyzing and everything, because that's what Jordan Peele makes you do, Um, but a lot of people, there was actually mixed reviews when people saw the trailer. Mm. I was on Twitter because Twitter is yeah, a great place yeah, to see yeah. what people yeah. think. Yeah. And um, after I saw the trailer, p- p- some people were like, yes, great. Like, first of all, not only is it a black, a black family, but it's like a dark-skinned black family. Mm. So a lot of people were really rooting for that because yeah. um, 
Lupita that Nyong'o representation Nyong'o, yeah. isn't oh, yeah, Lupita Nyong'o. She's she's the main. She's the mom. She's in there too. Yeah. Um, and then there's some people that were like kind of, um, joking about how he casted um a black family, but his wife is white and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually love her. Um, uh, anyways, but there was also. Um, people who were kind of criticizing it because they were like, of course he he cast a black family, but it's about it's a movie about a black family fighting other black like black, it's like yeah, black on black. You, it, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like it has more to do with like fighting your inner demons or something like that. Yeah, um, I think that, that's a stretch to me because yeah, like, I felt like that was a stretch too. Because come on, first of all, it's a horror movie. Second of mm-hmm. all, so you expect violence and or gore. It sounds like yeah. Fun. And second of all, there's obvious clear symbolism if you think that that's a separate yeah. family altogether and has nothing to do with, like, community relations at that point. There's definite... It's metaphorical, period. Like, you know that. Like, yeah. But I'm super excited. Like, I'm not a horror film person, and that no. trailer creeped me out, yeah. but I will watch I it for like Jordan Peele. Maybe we should watch it together. <laughs> okay. It, yeah, that would actually be better. <laughs> at least we'll be together. <laughs> Honestly, it would probably be better for me. Like, yes. Yeah, because Get Out was one. Like, Get Out was very race relations. Like, it was you. I feel like because it was so, um, so much about race and like the issues uh, along with that, it didn't seem as scary until right near the end. There's a lot of comic relief in that movie. Exactly, but I feel like this one is not because you know what you know what's creepy. Like people who act creepy Mm -hmm. that look like you, that's creepy. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to kids, when kids are creepy, that's, that's, I feel, I find that like the scariest thing ever. I hate little kids that look at you weird, okay? Like that. What are they thinking? Yeah. Like, why are you looking at me? Why are you smiling like that? Like, I don't know. Is there something you know that I don't? I don't like that. But I'm really excited to watch it. (laughs) But um, speaking of Chelsea Peretti, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is back. It is. And have you seen the, you. I'm like in and out with that show. It's not that I don't like it. I know. Well, I watch it very casually. Oh no, you yeah. can't. You can't watch it casually. They came back. They they just aired their first episode of the season last week. Yeah, this like, like yeah, it was it was great. It was amazing. I loved it. The show was hilarious. Like yeah, it just fun. it's never not funny. It is very funny. And if yeah. anybody hates on the show, they are lying. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's not true. It's it's such a it's such a chill show. I find like um it, it's very sitcommy too. Yeah. And I find that genre is even harder to pull off nowadays with what's on TV. It's kind of hard to pull off that genre with it. 80s sounding cheesy or been done before or you know things like that mm-hmm. so I like how Brooklyn Nine-Nine if anything is consistent like again being a person who's never watched really uh you know episode one to two to three in order or anything yeah. I've, I've jumped through seasons through episodes so I think that speaks to why yeah. it's easy to digest and stuff so the only thing I'm really upset about is Chelsea Peretti's leaving the show is she yeah like she was about kind of leaving the season? I think I think I think halfway through this season she's gone oh shoot Making me really sad. Like, I, like they say, oh, she'll be back, like for like you know those Drop special stuff, appearances yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's not the same without Gina. Yeah, I like her. I like her. She Gina Lemetti, Chelsea Pretty, Gina Lemet. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, she has a specific humor, and it translate like her humor translates in her actual real personal self that I see on Twitter. Not that I know her in person. Yeah. Um, but like it, the stuff she posts on Twitter, I'm like, that would that's Gina. Gina and Chelsea are the same. Right. No, no, they they like she's like a. She, for me, she reminds me so much of Aubrey Plaza. I don't know who that is. She, oh, she's like a very, um, she has very dry humor, black hair, and she's a white girl. Oh, man. So anybody listening who knows Aubrey Plaza, she's she's very, like, very much like Chelsea Peretti. Not as funny, but, like, mm-hmm. it's same, the same as in, like, if you see her in an interview versus you see her in a movie or anything she's done, she plays consistently the same character. Like, she never breaks. Oh. This, is, this exact same type of dry humor, mm-hmm. same deadpan faces for everything. <laughs> like, she does all of it. I feel that it's the same for Chelsea. Yeah. Um, I would like to see her in a different role. It would be interesting. Yeah. To see her in something but serious? I, I, I can't. That would be so weird. No. That would be so weird. <laughs> just, okay. Another thing, why I wanted to bring up the Us trailer, other than the fact that we didn't review it or anything. Well, my take on the review, the review actually, or of the, of the trailer, I'm excited by it because... I like L- Lupita Nyong'o a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I I like the concept. My thing is like, I I I can tell. Oh, I don't know if you noticed this too. Actually, there's a lot of references back to Get Out. Like, there's like similar shots or similar things that happened in that trailer that I'm like, that must be callbacks to to the original movie. And so my thinking was like, maybe this is in the same universe, which would be really cool. Mm. Um, so there there that kind of popped in my head. That's interesting. Um, because it it's a very different type of movie compared to Get Out. It is, but maybe if we watch it back together, I can show you, like, there's parts where, like, 
even like if you remember that Get Out trailer has a lot of shots of them going on road trips and like there's an mm. exact shot that's like the exact same in the Us trailer of the family going on the road trip and it's the same exact woods like sort of God they didn't change anything <laughs> in that there's that's there, interesting and then there's the shot of Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o the, the crying face it's, it's yeah I remember that I was just like that's that's like you yeah. can literally copy paste yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same certain things so I'm like maybe that's intentional maybe he's making it in the same place and same time and like this is a trilogy or something all along and we don't know same thing with, 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 with what's happening with Glass, that movie, too. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Okay, so it, that might be the case. And knowing Jordan Peele, he'd be the type to do, pull off something mm-hmm. like that. So there's that. But I'm I'm hoping that what was good with Get Out is that nothing was really telling you anything. Everything was very much yeah. showing you. And, like, you kind of put two and two together and you get the message you're mm-hmm. trying to pull off. Yeah. I'm really hoping... Uh, that the second movie does the same thing because this can come off very gimmicky, especially because the trailer already tells you that what's gonna the, happen. That the villains yeah. are the exact copies. They're themselves. And it could be yeah. very, you know what I'm saying? It could be yeah, it has to be done very well. Yeah. And I, I think, I think he, like, he has the ability. He's shown it through Get Out. Like, um, it's very subtle, but mm-hmm. also, like, you get it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, even though it is, it's a subtle. It's not like. His, it's not like someone's going like that's racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly, like exactly. you're like yes, that's that is racist. That's my thing because I think because that's, I'm afraid of that with this one because I think there's a part in the trailer that somehow someone verbally asks like why do they look just like us or something like that. I oh I, I think it might be one of the kids, which is fine. But that's a kiddish I, thing I, to do. I'm, I'm I would that, ask that. No, no, I think it's fair, but I'm hoping that they don't get to a point where they literally answer it the same way. To oh, be like, to be well, like they I, look like us because be, yeah. If you go back to the 1960s and then oh, you know, like, yeah. even explain the exact... Like, uh, okay, that's like, true. So I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't like that because I, I like endings where it kind of gives you... Um, yeah, I don't want it to tell me at all. Like, I want Honestly, to I would like to speculate. Like, you yeah, know what yeah, the yeah, endings yeah, that yeah, kind of yeah. give you a little bit, but they don't give you enough? Mm-hmm. So you're like... That's what mm-hmm. I want. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's I mean, it makes me mad, but like I yeah. like that. And like if there's some characters that die or some that survive, like I want to be able to put in my head why you know some of the replicants or you know the doubles are alive and some kids you know that kind of thing like yeah. i want to figure out for myself put those puzzle pieces together what if they get mixed up of who's who that that could be that could be can you imagine like they leave the vacation and like one of the kids is still one of the kids and then they go back to school <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> and it comes out with like a knife out of the locker <laughs> i'm ready um another yeah. thing too since we always have to save a spot for jordan peele or uh uh like you know keen peele for us yeah. is like such an important thing um, another thing on top of Jordan Peele, he's a very busy man. He's actually running a TV series called The Hunt, a soon. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, and it's going to be on uh, Amazon, right? It's, oh, they have Amazon their, Prime. Yeah, they're on the little streaming service. I don't want that. Don't Why? put it on Amazon Prime. That's another subscription I have to do. <laughs> yeah, that's how you scream illegally, guys. <laughs> I mean, yes, but like, so much work. But, so I haven't heard much of this other than it's a Nazi hunter show. Interesting. That's as much as I know. Whoa. But even more than that, I literally read this headline today that uh, it, Al Pacino is in talks to star in that, in that TV show, which, Whoa. first of all, that's I That's crazy. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember when he ever did TV. Al Pacino? Like... I was like, what? Um, like, yeah, do I don't personally saying? know. He might have, but I can't remember. But cause for me, that's leaps and bounds. If I'm Jordan Peele and I got Al Pacino to do his first TV show at the age he's at now, that's like, yeah. I'd be so proud of myself for like patting myself on the back. Like, the script must be that good. Um, knowing, like, mm, that's Pacino, really I don't know too much of uh, Al Pacino's work, but I, I know enough of the ones that he did with um, the other guy who's in Taxi. Oh, my God. And he did Raging Bull. Oh my god, the other Italian guy. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Oh yeah, Robert De Niro's great. Yeah. The ones that they've done together, I know majority of those, and those are all really well written movies. Yeah. Like he's really attracted to screen like screenwriting that's solid. Mm-hmm. So So if like, Al Pacino it, like agrees into this, I feel like it should be good. I, that's what I'm like, oh I'm like, what the heck? And it's oh like the now he'll be dealing with like a completely different era and you know Yeah, that, and it's completely different from what he usually does yeah, too. And it has to be historically accurate. Exactly. I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking like if he's gonna put in the, in that time and space and not mm-hmm. modern day. Oh my god, I'm like Modern day hunting Nazis, that's it, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. they still exist somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm really psyched for that. So I have I don't know any more details about the time or when it's coming out or whatever, but man this guy's busy and he's making money. That's so great. I'm happy for him. Good for him. Yay, exactly. <laughs> you heard from us, guys. Um, 
Another thing on the topic of movies, TV, the Golden Globes just happened. I'm yeah, I didn't watch them. No. I honestly forgot they happened. <laughs> Okay, I didn't Which I'm really mad about because the hosts are really good. Anyway, did you think so? Well, I didn't watch it, but I knew that, like, the, who they were. Yeah, 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 who yeah. they were. Yeah. Like, I, those individuals yeah. are great. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, oh, I'm kind of sad because, like, I would have loved to see what they did on, on... Yeah, yeah. Did you not like them as hosts? So, okay. Oh, don't break my heart. Okay, so I, I think... what I Okay, so let me preface it because I heard this after I watched it. So I, I wasn't as harsh on them after. Um, thanks. Uh... So, I think Sandra Oh, because of her busy schedule, and she's still doing that TV series and whatever. Oh, yeah. I heard that they didn't have... She didn't have that much time to rehearse uh, prior to the show. Oh. And so, um, again, knowing that after I'd watched it, it made a lot of sense to me because I felt like some of her comedic timing wasn't there, or, like, her tone of how she delivered mm-hmm. certain, certain jokes. Yeah. Kind of got me confused. Um, because you'll notice, like, award shows nowadays... Or, um, you know, if you're a monologist or you're someone who's hosting a show, you do one of two jokes. You do a joke that's like, haha, funny, I'm roasting someone. Mm-hmm. Or it's very political, very serious, and they mean what they say. So it's, Yeah, and I'm, then they go into comedic relief. Yeah, exactly. So it's one or the other. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, with the, the writing was good, but the delivery of set, when Sandra O used to make, like, the, like, when she used to say the jokes, I got confused about which one she was doing. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll need, you'll see what I mean by on certain points. Because there's, like, a part where she is referencing the Meryl Streep speech that she gave at a award show, like, a year ago. And everybody, like, stood up. Yeah, and, and it was, like, phenomenon. She's yeah. completely serious. So, Sandra Oh was, like, starting, uh, like, talking like that and saying political statements that I re- realized, like, three sentences in, she's completely, par- like, just saying exactly what Meryl Streep is saying. So I was like, oh, haha, it went from this to this. But in, but if you hear the audience, not everybody got it. Not everybody understood fully. Oh, that she was just repeating this, the the yeah. Meryl Streep. Yeah. So I got it like as an audience person. Yeah. Haha. Like she's she's doing both. Like mm-hmm. that's funny. Haha. But everybody audience is like, <laughs> do we clap and stand up for this or do we go yay Sandra or like it's so. So like, I guess yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't. I think it's the way she she delivered it. But Andy Samberg, of, of course. Like, I find him, gen- like, generally really funny. So I'm a fan of his, so he did really well. Um, but, yeah, overall, the show was, uh, I-, I guess, for the-, for the most part, really entertaining. Um, for those who, are, like, don't know this, I- I'm pretty, like, avid when it comes to award shows. Like, I love <laughs> to watch Golden Globes, Tonys, Oscars. Yeah, if you guys, like, listen to any of our podcasts where we talk about <laughs> award shows, it's always Razia watched it, and I did it. But I-, I saw a thing on Twitter, and then I add on Twitter. <laughs> But I love them. It's like it's like almost a family event for. for you know, it used to be when I was younger, but like now we just don't watch them anymore. I don't know why. Yeah, um, another thing too. So, the the dresses are amazing this year. First of all, like the fashion was really, really, really on point. Nobody wore anything like too offensive or too like you know what the hell are you wearing? Everybody was like looked really really nice. Especially like my shoutouts would be um, Bradley Cooper's wife and her girlfriend. I don't know what she is but they they she's a model um but what she wore in her hair and her makeup oh my gosh like she really she looked like a barbie doll she looked like unreal she was so stunning her she looked so good emily blunt looked really good she wore like um this gray dress that was just all lace the entire thing was just like embroidered type of lace all the way down it was like a long gown very pretty um uh, a lot of people obviously loved uh, Lady Gaga. She wore this almost like Cinderella looking blue gown that was like, huge. It was like a very long train. Mm-hmm. Um, those are just a few people. Um, but yeah, overall, like the the winners were interesting. Nobody was really shocking. Uh, Star is Born didn't get many awards. I think they got. I think they got just the musical one, which I mean, like a lot of people were seeing. Have that. you seen it yet? No, me neither. No, I have not, unfortunately. But that's the only one that won, like for that movie. <laughs> Um, I know Roma won uh, for Best Foreign Film. I heard. Which I told you. And she like, did her um, speech, the actress, right? Uh, oh, she might have because they won two awards. So I didn't, I, I, I don't know if I missed oh, it. I might be wrong. Second, um, uh, thing. I'm trying to think who else won. There's a lot of like unknown shows that uh, like were new to me that I was like, what, what are these shows winning on? I've never heard of any <clears> of them. Jim Carrey was there. It was interesting to see him in the crowd. And, like, he looks normal. Like, he doesn't have... Like, where beard. has he been? Yeah, he, he doesn't have, like, this giant beard or anything. He was just in a crowd. 
Uh, just randomly Jim Carrey. I think he has it. He has a TV show, but it's not like he does. Yeah, it's called. I think it's called Kidding or something like that. Um, and the, I think the lady from Get Out is in that. The mom. Mm. She's in that too, and it's I. I would assume like it looks like a dark comedy from what they show. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's still working. Um, and yeah, he did a bit, and it was like classic Jim Carrey stuff, like physical comedy. You know him. So it was nice to see him there. But yeah, overall, like I was sad. No, no like Hand Me So didn't get anything. That's you know, horrible. Always, always nominated, but always over like shone by some other more relevant. It makes show. no sense though, because Hand Me So is amazing. Like I got my brother to see, watch the first episode, and I was watching the first episode with him, and I was like, "This is I love it." <laughs> it's always, it's, yeah, that pilot's flawless, eh? But yeah, so each year the the right two people get nominated. The main lady, um, I keep forgetting her name. Like the main Hand Me So. Alfred, and then, uh, um... Are you talking about Elizabeth, what's her name? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss, I think. Elizabeth name. Moss, yeah. And then the one, the, the one, uh, the commander's wife. And Serena. Her, yeah, Serena, who, it, her real name is Yvonne something. Um, but so both of them always get nominated. Love them. They never I think win. they carry the show, honestly, both They're amazing. Win. They never win. It's they crazy. They never win. I honestly want to see, like, okay, Elizabeth Moss has, has won. Elizabeth Moss is year. more than that, she, is, has, is pretty... Well known. Yeah, and she's well known. She's been in Mad Men, and she's won, I think, an award previous to this for Handmaid's Tale. But I really want to see, especially like before the show even ends, I want to see Serena win something mm-hmm. because, honest, like she is like the antithesis to Emily Moss's character. Like you need her mm-hmm. for that show to run. So, yeah. Overall, like I'm I, so excited for season three. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm sorry. does it come out in April? I think it does. Right. We'll I don't know, but new then. Yeah, but yeah. I just I'm so excited. Like. Oh, man, especially how they leave us off. I, oh. I need to know. Um, but yeah, overall, Golden Globes was good. I kind of skipped through some of the speeches from the people I didn't know who they were. But uh, yeah, they, like no surprise that Mah- Mahershala Ali, I think he won for Green Book. Green Book got a lot of awards. This is the one I told you. Mm-hmm. I, you remember the story, the story of the taxi driver one? I have yet to watch that. The fact that it won more awards than I thought it would since it was kind of indie when it first came out. I... I want to jump on it more. I know more about... So the guy who actually wrote the script for the movie is... I didn't realize this was like a... I knew it was a true story, but the guy who wrote it is the son of the white guy who's in the film. Oh, no way. So he's literally writing about his dad. So That's crazy. The film. Oh. <laughs> a racist yes. who learns to yeah. change. But it was crazy. Like, I didn't realize that until he got up on stage and said, like, thanks to my dad. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> wow. But, yeah, I, I heard that shot. movie's really good. Need to see that. Need to see that badly. So, uh, really happy about it. How it went. Um, but the next award show, this is my segue to the next topic, would obviously be the Oscars, mm-hmm. uh, which we've heard a lot of controversy of. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to tell you about who. Yep. Did you? See- <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> I can't even remember what what's the controversy. I know what the controversy is, but. What was the specific thing that they didn't bring him on the Oscars for again? So, when they first got Kevin Hart on mm-hmm. uh, to the Oscars... Um, he said something, right? He didn't... No. Oh, no, no. It was from previous... He had homo- homophobic tweets, was it? Yeah, that surface, Yeah, that's that what it was. was. like, from five years ago. Like, it was a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, that were homophobic, and the Oscars had went, No, we're not interested anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people... It's because a lot of people sh- like shouted it out and went, "Hey, how are you guys hard?" Probably. Like this? Pro- yeah, that's probably how it came out. I don't think the Oscars did their research after the fact. You know, <laughs> like that. Yeah. That'd be shit on their part. Um, but long story short, like it kept going back and forth between no, put him back on. Yes, put him. You know, get him off. Mm-hmm. You know, Kevin Hart going, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, him getting a lot of support from celebrities all across. Like he's very integrated into like a lot of the classic mm-hmm. co- comedians we know now. So like people like. Terry Seinfeld and Ellen and all these other like The Rock were all um, saying like, "Hey, like he's a good guy." Yeah, like, that was a different time. Blah blah blah. I mean, I, I, I mean, yes, they were homophobic and like that's wrong. But literally, look into your past five years ago. You most likely said something that's wrong as well. And yeah, of course, as a celebrity, you have to be a, lo- a little bit more careful. Definitely, yeah. Um. And I'm not, like, excusing him. It's not justified. He shouldn't have said what he said. He shouldn't have tweeted. Like, you need to have common sense. He shouldn't have said, um, tweeted anything out that could that is homophobic to begin with. Yeah. But for you to lose an opportunity now because of something you did five years ago, I think is a little bit... Um, it's, a little, it's a little much. Yeah, and I don't... I 
Well, I think, uh, to be honest, on both sides, like both the Oscars team as well as uh, Kevin Hart's publicity team, it's been so messy. Like, between the both of them, how often they've been going back and forth, like, for both of them, it doesn't look good on either party. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point, either party should have been like, no. Like, from this point on, we're yeah, ready for something yeah. else. Right? Yeah. Um, Once the Oscars said no, they should have just moved on. Like, yeah. you don't be like, eh. Or, like, accept him back. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. celebrities instead of the public are saying, you know, do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, it says a lot about whose opinion we value. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, truly, it does. No, um, really, truly. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, like, one big drama fest. If anything, the only person benefiting, benefiting from this, I was thinking the other day, too, because I keep seeing him on my, like, trending feed for YouTube freaking every day. It's, like, him on a radio show, him on a Kevin Hart, right? show. Yeah. Yeah, of course he's benefiting. He was just on Ellen the other day. Yeah, and then he was on uh, Stephen Colbert's show uh, talking about some similar type of thing, about, like, how he would have killed the monologue had he been up. So I'm, like, you're totally benefiting off of this anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's such a publicity stunt, and now I don't like what it's turned into. So, I'm like, I, it's just so messy. I think it should have been, okay, you find these tweets. Like, be grown up about it. You shouldn't have to also, like... You find these tweets, you own up to your mistake. Yeah, this you, you own up to your mistake. You said what you said, but, like, if you've changed, you truly show, like, you know, that's the case. It was five years ago. I'm sorry for what I said at that time, but that's not me now. If you lose the opportunity, you lose the opportunity, and you move on. Yeah, exactly. And it's that's not, not how our world works. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. And it's not like, let's, like... Also, I don't have, like, I mean, I, I, I feel bad for the guy in that, like, he probably has had a lot of internal turmoil throughout all of this because he's getting judged very publicly. I get that. But at the same time, I'm not super sympathetic in that it's not like this guy has never had chances in his life or he's not doing well. Yeah, like, he's doing fine. <laughs> he, yeah, I think he has a movie that's coming up right now called The Upside that's getting, like, a lot of re like, good reviews, a lot of money. I heard, yeah, it looks like a really good story, too. Yeah, Brian Cranston's in it. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's serious, like, more on the it's, it's side. Yeah, it's not as... Com his last movie was terrible. Night nice school, yeah. So I <laughs> we talked about <laughs> we it. talked about it. Tiffany Haddish. Like, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be but great. What happened? Um. So yeah, like, and he gets sold out shows all the time. So not really like boohoo about this whole situation. Yeah, I mean, I understand the Oscars is a big thing, and like, for you to to host the Oscars, like that's huge, especially yeah. for for him. So. I could get, understand if you're upset or whatever, but, yeah. like... Uh, I do think, though, the Oscars will have a harder time now for finding a follow-up act, only because, as that host, you have to address the situation. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's true. You have to be the guy on stage to be able to talk about this stuff. So, I'm curious to see who they bring on or who has the balls to do that. But we'll see. I, I think what they need to do Who was now, the host last year? Was it Chris Rock? Or was that the year before? I can search it. But in the meantime, I'm trying to think. Have they done a? They've done. Have they done a female host? For the Oscars. Ellen has done it. Wait, wait, wait. At, like a while ago, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, Anne Hathaway did it once with. Oh, I remember Anne Hathaway's. Yeah, that, that was like, great. <laughs> that was so interesting. Oscars host. Um, but yeah. In the meantime, uh, while I look this up, for the past previous years. Um, I want to talk about a few movies I watched recently. Uh, even though we did touch upon this the last episode, Iman gave her wonderful review. Or it, would, it would have been two episodes ago uh, of Spider-Man Into mm. the Spider-Verse. I actually finally you saw it. You saw it? Yeah. Yay! How did you like it? I was so happy the entire time. <laughs> right? It's just like you're smiling. Fun. But did you cry? I, I didn't cry. Okay, I didn't cry. You teared up. But I was like... I didn't like cry cry, but I teared up. But I was like the whole time like, you know, covering your face. You're like, I don't like any of this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. But... Okay. Spoiling. I don't know. <laughs> no, let's not do spoilers. But you know the part where you find out who the the villain's um, little sidekick is? Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was shook. Yeah, yeah. You were like, no. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, that's why he's never home. <laughs> But I, no, I, like, for me, okay, so, going into it, I knew I was going to be floored by the animation, because the trailer for me was perfect, like, you could tell they had a specific aesthetic and color scheme, and, like, Yeah, and they they were consistent throughout the entire thing. Oh, my God, so, okay, I, I think I've mentioned before, like, I'm a big, big, big fan of animated movies, and I, like, kind of keep track of, like, the different trending things, and, like, even indie movies, I'm very much in, involved, because I'm such a fan of, like, animation as an art. 
a Spider-Man, like a movie that looks like this, like that trailer looks like how some um, concept art or storyboards of a, of a movie look like, right? When they're using certain images to like sell the movie to get people to fund it, that's what that looks like. But instead, Spider-Man, the whole freaking out two hours worth of that movie looks like that, mm-hmm. of like that quality. Like all the way till the end, they didn't make one simple shot. Like I was thinking the entire time, I was like, they could have done all of these much simpler, given themselves like a lot less work to do, but went for like the hardest thing. They really like put in that work, that detail. Yeah. And I loved how they incorporated the comic book style into it as well, like yeah. the little the speech the, the, bubbles yeah, yeah. and like the thought the thought like little bars. Which of added the, to the comedy. It was that great. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I loved. Um, so I, I watched it with Ramesa actually, and like nice. she didn't she didn't know um, that there was like the side characters involved. Like oh the, she did what the Penny Parker like she she purposely like did oh she not just watch didn't oh, okay that's cool about this but she knew she wanted to watch it obviously. Um, so she didn't know that that Penny Parker, like the anime girls in there, um, the Porker one, like mm-hmm. the, <laughs> the, the pig Spider-Man and then the uh, Spider-Man Noir. Yeah. We're all in there. So when they show up in the film, she's like shocked. She's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Cause she's like kind of anti anime and I'm here like, yes, yes, I love her. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I love how they incorporated them and kept their art sales consistent too. Which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like jarring. Because like they have their own unique style. Yeah. And, but they're in this certain universe that looks different from what yeah. they're used to. And even if you notice like with their powers too, all those colors stick with Yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. So it was like, even though it was different, it wasn't like, oh, that looks wrong. It, it was just. It contrast exactly. badly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd like to, did you notice how like, so at every point in this movie, any time of the new other Spider-Mans appear, they always go back and say, this is how I became... Yeah. So, most of it is, like, I got re- bitten by a radio spider. Radio they spider. gotta get, get that out of the way. But the, if you notice the pig one, do you know that it's different? Yeah, he got ra- he got bit by a radioactive pig. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> that was, like, my favorite I love thing. that one. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> oh, like, so they handle, like, the, the comedy perfectly. Yeah. And, 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 like, what was he before? He was a spider. He was a spider he that got bit by radio. <laughs> this pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like the stupidest thing. Uh, and he makes like the he he he's actually the one that comes up with like the dirtiest joke too. In like the beginning when he's like sweaty and he's like and he, holding out his wet hand and he's like shake my head shake my head it's what I promise. And I was like, Oh my god, they got away with that joke that. in the film and it's a kid movie. Anyways, I like I like, <laughs> I kept noticing the small stuff because it it's a very like fast paced movie that sometimes I feel like if you blink, like you miss mm-hmm. some kind of physical comedy or a joke that was like really, like, slipped in there. Um, but all in all, even, like, the emotional core of the film, like, the story itself, like, Miles Morales, the entire film, is basically about not just him gaining this power, but um, having to utilize it and kind of own up, be a man, face your fears, and just go for it. Like, if you want to feel that you have, you owe somebody in your life something, you have to just do it. Like, yeah. enough of the excuses, like, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That man hit me so hard each and every time. Like he couldn't control his powers or couldn't. Yeah. Like, he would talk and talk and be like, "Yeah, don't worry, I can handle it." And then would and then he would like fail. Yeah, and then it was so sad. Him. And all the other spiders would be like, "Kid, you don't got it." <laughs> and I was like, "Leave him alone. Yeah. He's just a kid." Yeah, I know. I was like, "He will be ready. <laughs> He'll be ready." Shot. Which is why I love that end scene. The yeah. last. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. So it was it was really nice and like. That they kept him an artist the entire film. Like, if you notice, he, they introduce him as being, like, a digital artist. Like, he's on his tablet mm-hmm. thing. And, like, the whole... Sorry, I'm, like, going way back and forth here. Just because there's so many things to mention. But the the Post Malone song, Sunflower. He was like, I love that song. I know. He's so cute. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, yes, I was dancing with him. I was like... Except I was, like, actually singing the song because I was like, I love this. Anytime it's on the radio, it's like turn up the volume a little bit. That more. song is great. It's so like it's, it's such a happy song. So chill, except it's kind of sad too. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> you look actually listen to the lyrics. Yeah, all in all, really good movie. I think uh, Iman's review since the last few episodes, she kind of gave it a five out of five. Mm-hmm. I pretty much am giving it the same. Near flawless movie. That's um, probably the best animated movie I've seen, this, like so far. Oh really? Recently? Do you think? Oh recently? Yeah, I, I think easily of last year. Like, in terms of the animation. I think... No, no, yeah, no yeah. I think, by far, that's the best animated movie I've yeah, seen. Yeah, and it won for the Golden Globes, just so you know. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, that's a clear win, though. They had a really good year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and obviously, like, the, the race representation and the entire thing was great, mm-hmm. too. 
Um, but yeah, guys, go check it out. Uh, let us know what you think of it, too. Because I don't think I've met or heard online of anybody who was like, I don't like it. I met people that didn't like it. And I was like, I was like, do you know like what you're inside? watching? <laughs> I was so confused. What was, what was their gripe? What was their gripe? No, they didn't have, they didn't have like re- actual critique. It was just like, oh, I just didn't like it. That's fa- right. false. Like you didn't, you, just, you didn't open your mind. No, or like, I, you, you know, there's like, those type of people. Or like they fell like, asleep. I want to have like a different opinion. <laughs> but then that's the main, yeah, whatever. That or like they fell asleep halfway through the movie and I was like, that's not possible. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that's pretty much where we're going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, thanks for listening in. Uh, like always, you can find us on Instagram at Talkaholics Podcast. No. It, it's just pod. Yeah, Talkaholics Pod. Um, same thing with our Gmail <clears throat> that Iman's always had up. <laughs> uh, we're also obviously on YouTube, SoundCloud. Um, just search us up. Give us a listen. Thanks to those who, again, SoundCloud, probably are some of our most active listeners are there. Yeah. So thanks for checking in. Again, thanks, guys. a lot of people from the Americas. So thanks for listening to our voices. I know. Somehow you tolerate it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like as always, uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.